PCR is one of the most routinely used methods in molecular biology to amplify the DNA of interest or gene cloning and many such applications. Generally, using complementary pairs, we get a specific amplification. But sometimes, we do not know the exact sequence of target DNA or gene to be amplified. Therefore, we use either the degenerate primers or partially complementary primer from other related species. Moreover, at times, even when you use 100% complementary primers, your primer may bind to multiple sites on DNA and may produce multiple amplifications, some of which are of your target and some are from undesired regions. One of the effective ways through which you can reduce the chances of non-specific amplification and allow only the specific target to amplify is by performing touchdown PCR. But before this, let's briefly see the basic steps involved in standard PCR amplification. The standard PCR involves three basic steps. Denaturation, where the double-stranded DNA are separated by providing high temperature, generally 95 degrees Celsius. This is followed by reduction in temperature to a point where primers bind to the complementary sites on the DNA. This is called as primer annealing. Annealing is generally done at melting temperature, also known as TM, or 2 to 5 degrees below the TM. In the next step, the temperature is increased to 70 or 72 degrees, where the DNA polymerase carries out the extension of complementary DNA strand. These three steps are repeated for about 25 to 35 cycles to create millions of copies of desired fragment. This is termed as PCR amplification. This is followed by a final extension for a longer duration depending upon the amplicon size to complete the synthesis of partially extended products if there are any. Finally, the PCR reaction is stored at 4 degrees or minus 20 degrees for longer duration. Coming on to the basic principle behind touchdown PCR. In touchdown PCR, you play around with the annealing temperature in such a way that you get specific amplification by keeping the annealing temperature much higher in the initial cycles and let only the specific and highly complementary region of the DNA to bind with the primer. In subsequent PCR cycles, annealing temperature is gradually reduced to further increase the chances of amplification while maintaining the specificity of the product amplified. Now let's quickly see how touchdown PCR actually works. In touchdown PCR, you initially set the primer annealing temperature at 5 or 10 degrees higher than the melting temperature or TM. And if you know that at higher temperature only very specific or highly complementary DNA will pair with each other. With each subsequent cycle, you lower down the annealing temperature by a fraction of a degree till you reach closer to the melting temperature. Thus you perform 10 to 15 cycles at annealing temperature more than the TM. This way you increase the PCR stringency and get much more copies of a specific target to be accumulated and only very few non-specific amplicons would be there even if any. The remaining 10 to 15 cycles are performed at lower temperature at TM or TM-2 during which you increase the chances of PCR amplification while maintaining the specificity. And now as you have higher number of target amplicons, they will preferentially be amplified more. As a result, you get a specific amplicon as a final product in very high number. There is another simple variant of touchdown PCR. In this, you simply perform 10 to 15 cycles of PCR amplification at 5 or 10 degrees higher than TM as annealing temperature. After this, you perform another 10 to 15 cycles of PCR amplification by annealing at TM or TM minus 2 or 3 degrees. This way using touchdown PCI you reduce off target amplification and have higher chances to get a specific product amplified. If you want to learn more about other PCI variants and markers do check out my other videos. Comment below for your queries and suggestions. Subscribe to stay connected and see you in my next video.